Hey, yo, what's good? It's Ayo Tea Time here, and I'm back with another Tea Time Tech. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the Steam Deck. And yes, I said it. We're going to be talking about the Steam Deck again. If you watch my first video on the Steam Deck, you would know that I just acquired the Steam Deck when I recorded that video and just walked through some simple processes with the Steam Deck. This time, I'm going to get a little more in depth because I have a little more knowledge now. And I'm going to update you. I'm going to tell you exactly how I feel about the Steam deck now since i've been able to travel with it i've been able to download some stuff and i also been able to swap out my ssd and i know a lot of you have been waiting to see that video of me swapping out the ssd in the steam deck to upgrade to a one terabyte ssd so without further ado let's get right into this video <laughs> Now, in my first video, you knew how excited I was about Hogwarts Legacy. And the fact that Hogwarts Legacy was going to be compatible from the beginning when it released on the Steam Deck. Now, this is the first time I play Hogwarts Legacy on the Steam Deck. It looks amazing. It feels great. Now, it's not going to look like it looks on PC, PlayStation, Driver, Xbox Series S. But this is a real live look at some of the Hogwarts Legacy gameplay on the actual Steam Deck itself. So I wanted to show you all what it was like to actually dock the Steam Deck and play it on a monitor or a TV screen, whichever one you have. Now, the loading times take a little bit longer on the Steam Deck. As we know, you can't expect it to be as fast as it is on your PC. As well as in the last section of the video, you did see a little bit of stuttering and movement. You will see the same thing when you hook the actual Steam Deck up and dock it to a TV. But I see no issues with this. I actually enjoy having mine docked to do certain things. I actually have a portable monitor that I take with me when I travel and actually play mouse and keyboard looking at the portable monitor and another thing is the actual sound here is coming through the steam deck and as you can see it is actually pretty loud so you know I think the sound quality is good whether you use headphones or not it's still a good quality audio that is coming out good quality here on the picture just you have to be careful about thinking that these type of handhelds are going to have the same power that your PC, PlayStation 5, or Xbox Series X or S has. So, before we go any further with this video, I want to address three things, three important things about this SSD replacement in my personal video. The first thing is going to be that you will see me with gloves on at the beginning and you will see me take them off i didn't feel like i got the necessary grip that i needed with the gloves on so i took them off it is okay that you do not wear gloves but if you do not wear gloves please just make sure that you ground yourself appropriately because the human body does carry electrical current and you can shock those components so just ground yourself whatever you feel comfortable with doing please do that secondly is unplugging the battery in the steam deck now i've seen some people do this and i've seen some people decide not to do this i chose to unplug the battery just to make sure that there was no other current or that i had no other way to turn the steam deck on while i was doing this which is why i actually unplugged the steam deck battery but please 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 be very careful when you're physically trying to get the battery unplugged just please be careful and the third thing is you're not going to see me actually download the steam os and actually put that image on the brand new ssd because i actually cloned my original ssd so the cloning process took about 20 minutes give or take and I cloned it and that's how I actually did my transfer of everything that was on my original SSD to my new SSD. Okay, so for anybody that does not know, a clone is an exact replica of everything that was on that SSD to include the operating system. So literally I did no re-download of anything. I did no putting in passwords. I did none of that because I cloned my SSD. But we're going to get right back into this video. I hope you enjoy it. 
So there are eight screws on the back of the seam deck that you need to take out. There are four in the middle. The four in the middle are shorter screws. And then the four on the outside closer to the back buttons are the longer screws just so you know what they are short goes in the middle long goes on the outer side of the steam deck where you would actually grip the steam deck now be careful here with taking the screws out because i did have some difficulties getting a few of the screws out some of them i felt like they were going to either get stripped or i weren't going to be able to get them out at all as you can see i am changing screw heads here to see if i can get a better grip on that screw just be very careful with what you are doing with these screws you do not want to strip them because if you do you know that you're not going to be able to get them back in or get them out fully so just be very careful with this step here Now this screw right here gave me the most trouble and what you'll see me do in this video is you're actually going to see me pop the back off and pray that the screw comes out when once I actually pop the back of the steam deck off. So like I said once again just be very very careful with these screws because you can strip them very easily and you do not want to do that. let's talk about taking the back of the steam deck off now as you can see i have my ipad up there i'm going back and forth looking at videos that i had watched a thousand times before i did this but i just had to play it while i was actually doing it again the easiest way to get the back off is actually going to be to get the corner where a trigger is and then try to pop the back off as you see me doing that is the easiest way to get the steam deck back off if you try to pop it in the middle you can do it you can see me struggle with that a little bit but once I change positions you will watch this back come off nicely and the back comes off and excuse my nosy cat walking around trying to see what's going on as you can see in the background Mr. Blue there just has to check the whole house out So oh, you're definitely going to want uh, tweezers for this part. As you can see me carefully peeling back that tape right there because this is a screw right there that you have to unscrew in order to get the back plating off. That back plating is actually covering the SSD. So be very careful with that because you're going to want to place that back over that screw once you put it back and you don't want to tear it completely off. Just be very, very careful.
Now, here I am trying to get the battery loose. Be very careful when you're doing this as well. You don't want to snatch it. You don't want to just pull it. Use some tweezers. Get a good grip on it and see if you can pull it out that way as I did. Like I said, it's just another step where you have to be very, very careful. And as you can see, I'm looking at a YouTube video to see how someone else did it. And then you will see me be able to pull the actual strip to detach the battery. That one screw is like no other on every SSD. Unscrew that screw, pop that SSD out, and you know what to do from there. But once you pop this SSD out, be very careful with that lining shielding that you see there. You're going to want to take some tweezers and carefully pull that apart because you're going to want to put this shielding back on your brand new SSD. And you know if you have purchased a Steam Deck, the best thing to use as a cover for the Steam Deck right here is the Steam Deck case you get with the Steam Deck because it fits perfectly in there. That's why I was using my Steam Deck case. You're going to want to do this and use this while you are trying to take apart the Steam Deck to swap the SSD. Use the Steam Deck case. So we are back in the process of putting the Steam Deck back together. The SSD at this point has completely finished the cloning process. And as you can see, you're going to see me start to put the case back together. That is the tool that I use to actually clone my SSD. That is the inland one terabyte SSD from Micro Center that you see me putting back into the Steam Deck right now. So here, I noticed that the Steam Deck case, the back casing was not going on right. The issue with that was the fact that I had put a screw somewhere it didn't belong. So just be careful of that. Be mindful. Same thing when you're dealing with a laptop. Just know that if it is not fitting properly, you probably have a screw in the wrong place. Steam Deck has booted back into a workable, a workable piece of equipment at this point and handheld console. Steam Deck is working good. I'm going through the menu to look at the different settings, make sure all my settings are the same, as well as I'm trying to look at the storage to make sure it is properly reading that a one terabyte drive is in there. And yes, it is, guys. This is why I cloned my SSD because I did not want to have to go through the process of re-downloading every single game that I had, doing all the signing in and everything for all of that re-downloading the epic game store re-downloading discord all of that okay so cloning the ssd is probably the way to go but if you don't know how to do it i would recommend just going ahead and doing a re-image of the steam os and starting from scratch again so guys, I hope you enjoyed that Steam Deck video. I hope you got a 
understanding of how to take the Steam Deck apart and to actually replace the SSD in the Steam Deck. But now we're going to get into the actual tea time take portion of this review. And we're going to talk about why I changed the Steam Deck and what I actually think about it now. So here's the thing. I changed the SSD one because I only had a 256 gigabyte and we know games take that up tremendously. I also had a one terabyte SD card in my Steam Deck. Now, the reason why I wanted the SSD is because we know when you're putting in removable memory that it is not as fast as a SSD and the SD card is very slow to actually download stuff on. So I decided to change it as well as the fact that I have downloaded different apps on the steam deck if that makes sense like discord and like the epics game store so in order to do this you have to make sure that you have the right amount of space on your ssd because you cannot write discord nor can you write epics game store battle net riot games any of those things you cannot write to an sd card they have to be on the ssd the actual internal memory on the steam deck hence the reason why I wanted to actually change my memory because I needed more memory because I'm actually adding more things that cannot go on the SSD itself so the Epic's game store works perfect I played Toshia on it I played the forklift game on it I played a variety of games through the Epic Game Store on the actual Steam Deck. Discord works flawlessly. It runs in the background while you're playing games. I have played Sons of the Forest with friends. We've been in Discord and actually playing now. The thing I will say about Sons of the Forest is it's not compatible and it does not work the greatest. It will crash. Um, so I would say for right now, kind of stay away from Sons of the Forest on the Steam Deck because it's it really doesn't work that well. I may get like five or ten minutes good gameplay and then the system itself just totally crashes and i get kicked from the game now other games that are not compatible that you can play sifu i just played that yesterday worked perfectly pretty much you can play everything on the steam deck there may be some issues but you can play them on the steam deck if it says it's not compatible you still can play those games on the steam deck now for travel purposes the steam deck has a horrible battery life i'm not going to sugarcoat that for you the steam deck's battery life is absolutely trash trash can Throw it away. I mean, I was on a three hour flight and I barely made it halfway through that flight. I was playing Atomic Heart. Now, I was playing Atomic Heart on Ultra Settings like an idiot. I was playing it on Ultra Settings and it lasted about an hour and 30 minutes and it was fully dead. So, what I will say is get a portable battery pack if you're traveling with it when you're on a flight or something or sit with some seats that have so where you can charge because if not you're not going to have the steam deck for long it's going to die now a lot of these games whether it says it's compatible or not and or it's verified that it's compatible the first thing that i would do is lower the settings to make them run better because if you're trying to play on the steam deck at ultra settings of course you're going to burn the battery life up just go ahead and lower the settings because you should not be expecting the game to look like it looks on your pc if you are you're sadly mistaken i don't know what to tell you it's not going to look like that I mean, the Nintendo Switch doesn't look like that, for God's sake. Nor does the Logitech G Cloud handheld. Does not look like that. Do not expect it to look like full gaming PCs or full gaming consoles like the PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X. Just lower the settings so that way it is playable that way it doesn't have as much stuttering just lower and you will enjoy your experience while playing any game on the steam deck would i recommend that you buy a steam deck yes i absolutely would recommend that you buy a steam deck i love my steam deck over the logitech g cloud uh, handheld as well as the nintendo switch but 
like I said, I have the Nintendo Switch for different things and different reasonings, but I would absolutely recommend the Steam Deck. I would recommend probably getting the lower end of the Steam Deck and then just doing the upgrades yourself. That way you aren't paying the higher amount of money for something that you can do yourself anyways. That would be my recommendation. Honestly, for me, on a scale of 1 to 10, the Steam Deck is probably an 8.5. I have a dock. I have a portable monitor. I have a mouse and keyboard that goes with me everywhere. So I take my Steam Deck traveling on airplanes, con different countries, different states. Absolutely love it. I can enjoy my PC games from wherever I am even without the internet so it is absolutely amazing 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 i can't recommend the steam deck any more than what i already have because i'm not sponsored for one so can't recommend it any more than i already have i would say if you're looking at getting the steam deck maybe just wait till it goes on sale again it just went on sale they may do another sale here shortly i don't know but the Steam Deck is something that I would recommend. My tea time take is it is a 8.5 out of 10. Honestly, and the only reason why I would say it is 8.5 is because of the battery life is horrible. It's just, it's just bad. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. You know what to do. If you enjoyed this content, hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to get notified every time I go live or even upload a video. But be on the lookout for my next video, which is going to be on the PlayStation VR 2. You know what my three favorite words are. Protect your peace. Love you guys. And until the next video.